How to change the gain of your guitar pedal. But wait, this doesn't work for every pedal. A caveat, guys, this only works for inverting op amp distortion and overdrive pedals. All right, today we're gonna to talk about op amps, specifically uh, ones in overdrive pedals and distortion pedals that are in the uh, inverted gain stage type of a setup. What we got right here is a DBE Blues Crusher, which is based around the Marshall Blues Breaker pedal. Now this will actually apply to pretty much any of the Blues Breaker style overdrives and clones, but uh, pretty much anything that's got a op amp in an inverted gain scenario, uh, this will apply. So what we got here is a, a clean tone just to give you an idea of what's going on. And let's turn this on. This will be the standard setup that a Blues Breaker would sound like. And then let's add a little bit of gain to the to the signal there. Flipping the switch on the blues crusher, we get a little bit more gain. Let's go between the back and forth here just to get an idea. As you can tell, just by flipping the switch here, we get a little bit of a difference in uh, the intensity of the drive going on here. Well, let's see why that is and how we can apply that to our own circuits. All right, so here we have an inverting amplifier. We're gonna use a TL072 op amp, hook up its power pins. We're gonna set the bias to half of the power voltage there. So 4.5 volts going into the non-inverting pin. And then we're gonna have an input, an output, and two resistors going through a feedback loop going to the inverting pin. So why is this called an inverting amplifier? Well, for a few reasons. It's an amplifier because we're going to be taking a small signal here coming in from the input, and on the output we're going to get a larger signal coming out. So it's amplifying. Secondly, we have a signal that if it starts on the upswing and then ends on a downswing, the opposite is going to happen on this side. It's going to start on the downswing and end on the upswing. It's going to be inverted or have its phase changed right there. And lastly, the reason it's called an inverting amplifier is we're coming in on the inverting pin, pin 2, with the input signal, as opposed to coming in from the non-inverting pin, pin 3. If that was the case, that would be what's called a non-inverting amplifier, which is not part of this video. So, how does the signal get amplified. Well, the signal gets amplified by a matter of ratio between RA and RB. So let's set some values here. We're going to set RA to 1K and we're going to set RB to 10K. So what happens here? Well, let's just say we got a, a uh, signal that's a half a volt. So if we have a half volt signal coming in here, it's going to go through these resistors, through the negative feedback loop, and then go out the output. The ratio here is going to be RB over RA, or 10K over 1K, or 10 to 1, which means we have a gain of 10. So that means this little half volt signal that comes in here will get amplified 10 times from, from a half volt signal to a 5 volt signal coming out here on the output. So that's a pretty good uh, increase. Now one could go, oh, well, if I can just change resistors and that changes my output, I can just simply change the ratio to anything I want and get any amplification that I want. So yeah, we could turn around and go, all right, let's change RB to 100K. Now I'm gonna get 100 times an amplification here. So my little half volt signal that came in here, we uh, change the ratio to 100, so multiply that half volt by 100, and I get a 50 volt on the output, and that's extremely loud, right? Well, there's limitations to the amplification, that limitation namely being the power rail that's coming in on the op amp, and that op amps aren't perfect, so they don't even make it to their power rail. In this case, it doesn't even make it to 9 volts. So there will be limitations as to the amplification of what this amplifier will do with the ratio of resistors. Now, what it will do is it will amplify the signal 100 times, but it will clip everything that is beyond the rails of, say, the 9 volt on the op amp. 
with it being at 50 volts, that's going to be clipping a lot. All right, so what we got here is we have a inverting op amp that's on the DBE Blues Crusher. Now this circuit's kind of the same that you would find on other pedals like the Marshall Blues Breaker, the Analog Man King of Tone, the JHS Morning Glory, the Wampler Pantheon, the Robert Keeley 1962, the... What do they got? The Love Pedal JTM does this. The uh, ZVEX Box Rocks does this. It's a very common circuit. It's found in a lot. The idea is simply to take a op amp in an inverting fashion, put some gain behind it, and there's your drive. So let's figure out how much this guy's driving. In the DBE case, if we have the gain knob cranked all the way up, that means this is zero ohms of resistance, so we can basically just ignore it in that case. So now we have to find out well, first off, is this an inverting op amp? Well, we know this is an inverting op amp because the non-inverting line is not getting any of the guitar signal. It's just getting bias. The guitar signal is coming in on the inverting line. So now we know it's an inverting op amp. So now we just got to find RA and RB from the previous example so we can figure out that ratio that tells us what kind of gain we're getting. So we know that R5 right here is going to be the RA. because, Like I said earlier, we can ignore this. So now we just got to figure out RB looking at this negative feedback loop here. And there's a lot going on, but let's break that down. So the ratio, if we come down here into this feedback, will be set by RB. Well, this resistor right here does start here on this inverting input line, but it doesn't make it over to the output, so it's not fully making feedback. It's got to go through this diode array here, which is soft clipping. We'll get to that in a minute. But basically that means R7 is not part of figuring out this gain equation. So what is? Well, if we have the switch right here, we have a setup where we can select which level of gain we'd like to choose. So we kind of look at it as a low gain, high gain scenario. Low gain being the lower resistor, higher gain being the higher resistor. So if we go with a low gain scenario, we got 220K over 10K or 22 over 1 or a gain of 22 going down this path. In the higher gain scenario, if we flip the switch, it'll ignore this resistor right here, and then it'll go through R13, the larger resistor. So now with the larger resistor, we have 470K over 10K, or 47 over 1, and that gives us a good old-fashioned gain of 47. Now, I personally like to increase the value of R13 even further. I like to crank it all the way up to a mega-ohm resistor, which would be 1,000K. That'll give me a 1,000 over 10, or 100 over 1, or gain of 100. That way I can go from a, a light gain, which crunches things up really well, but if I want to play a solo, I can flip the thing up to a higher gain setting and kind of cut through the mix a bit. Now, going back to this resistor right here, what is it doing? Now, it has nothing really to do specifically with the gain, but more about what's going on with this clipping down here. Uh, this resistor right here is taming the amount of this gain signal getting clipped. So if I were to increase the value of this resistor right here, it will soften the knee on the soft clipping even further, making it more and more transparent the larger the value of this resistor. If I decrease the value of this resistor or shunt it completely, then I will get a much harsher soft clipping scenario through these inline series resistors or inline series diodes, sorry. So I hope that kind of clears things up here. Uh, what you just need to do if you're looking at the schematic of your pedal that you want to manipulate or mod, just simply look for this kind of a configuration with the op amp, where the bias is going into the positive sign right here, the non-inverting pin, and that you have your guitar signal going into your inverting pin. And then just simply look for the, the resistor going across the negative feedback loop, and if you want more gain, increase the value. If you want less gain, decrease the value. And that will basically set up your volume, gain, and tone. Let me know if you like these kind of videos. If you do, please press like or comment below. And thanks for watching. Cheers.